Number 10, USS Bear. The USS Bear went down in history as one of the Coast Guard's most famous ships. As a forerunner to modern icebreakers, the cutter enjoyed a lengthy career in the frigid Arctic and North Atlantic regions and even served in Antarctica for a short period. The ship was built in 1874, originally as a sealing vessel. Its military service started 10 years later in 1884 when the U.S. Navy bought it and used it for an Arctic rescue mission. After that, the ship worked as a Coast Guard cutter for over 40 years along Alaska's 20,000-mile coastline, searching for seal poachers, illicit traders, and whalers in need of help. The bear also functioned as a floating courthouse, delivered food to hungry civilians, and ferried reindeer between Siberia and Alaska. From 1939 to 1941, it served in the U.S. Antarctic Service Expedition. Then, during World War II, the ship patrolled the waters off Greenland, making it the oldest Navy ship to be deployed outside the continental U.S. and one of the last ships with sails to be used in war. The Bear was finally retired from military service in 1948. Philadelphia businessman Alfred Johnston bought it in 1963 with plans to turn it into a floating restaurant. But the vessel foundered and sank 260 miles east of Boston while en route to its new home in California. The Coast Guard rediscovered the wreck in 2019, but only recently confirmed that it truly is the one and only USS Bear. It's unknown whether there are any plans to further explore it. Number 9. Sogol Tank Cemetery Just a few miles outside the German town of Sogol, there's a small field that contains around two dozen abandoned Leopard 1 and M47 Patton tanks, all arranged in neat lines. Strangely, nobody seems to know why they're there. And while the site is impossible to ignore, the German military is strangely secretive about the tanks. Designed by Porsche, the Leopard 1 tank functioned as a main battle tank for West Germany during the Cold War, when the country was split into two both ideologically and physically by the Berlin Wall. The Leopard 1 entered into service in 1965. Nearly 6,500 of the tanks were produced, and it became a popular choice among European militaries. The last of them were withdrawn from service in 2003, when they were replaced by the Leopard 2. The M47 was an American battle tank named after World War II General George S. Patton. It went into service in 1951 and was used primarily by the U.S. Army and Marine Corps. You may be surprised to learn that the M47 is the only American tank that the U.S. military has never used in combat. But it has seen war under other militaries and some are still in use today. There's no physical barrier stopping people from going near the mysterious collection of tanks, but there is a warning sign cautioning people against trespassing and threatening to prosecute anyone who enters the property. Some suspect that the tank cemetery is an active military site and that helicopter pilots use the vehicles for target practice. Number 8. Wild Eyes 16-year-old Abby Sunderland left Marina del Rey, California in early 2010 aboard her 40-foot yacht Wild Eyes with plans to sail around the world non-stop and all alone. Sailing was in the teen's blood. A year earlier, her brother Zach had become the first person under 18 years old to sail around the world. Shortly after he made the landmark achievement, the sibling's parents bought the blindingly yellow Wild Eyes for Abby and customized it for her upcoming trip. But things didn't go as smoothly as planned. Right off the bat, the Australian-built vessel encountered electrical and fuel problems, forcing Abby to restart her voyage 10 days later from Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. Several months into her trip, the teen activated her emergency satellite beacons from a remote location in the Indian Ocean halfway between Madagascar and Western Australia. The Wild Eyes was struggling against 50-foot waves and 60-knot winds. Thankfully, a French vessel rescued Abby. She left her banana yellow boat behind in the terrifying storm. Nobody saw the Wild Eyes again for almost nine years until an aircraft crew saw it floating upside down off southern Australia. The barnacle-covered yacht's signature eyes were faded and the boat's mast had broken off during the storm that had forced its young captain to call for help. Seeing the vessel so many years later was an emotional experience for Abby, who said that she didn't expect it to ever be found. Number 7. Châtillon Car Graveyard Until recently, a forest near the village of Châtillon in southern Belgium was home to a massive collection of rusting cars. There are conflicting stories about where exactly they came from. According to one legend, the vehicles belonged to American soldiers who were stationed in the region during World War II. When they returned home at the end of the war, it would have been extremely expensive for the soldiers to have the cars they bought overseas shipped to the U.S. So they drove the vehicles up a hill and into the woods, parked them neatly in rows, and simply abandoned them. If the story is true, it means that none of the troops missed their deserted cars enough to retrieve them. Residents are quick to point out that many of the vehicles were post-World War II models pointing toward the possibility that the site was just an ordinary junkyard. 
Châtillon was once home to as many as four car graveyards, housing as many as 500 vehicles. But most have been removed, and local collectors have already taken anything they felt was worth keeping. Time has not been kind to the remaining cars, which are heavily eroded and decaying. Number 6. Kiska Submarine On the remote Aleutian Island of Kiska in Alaska, there's an orca-shaped World War II midget submarine sitting near the shore. The Japanese Navy brought six of them to the island when they occupied the region in 1942, but only one remains today, serving as a rusting, lonely reminder of one of the darkest chapters in world history. The battery-powered 78-foot submarine, which sat just two men, can be found in the grass off Kiska Harbor. Alluding to the claustrophobic environment the vehicle offered, archaeologist Deborah Corbett told the Anchorage Daily News that she couldn't imagine a worse job than having to operate one. Midget submarines like this could only dive about 100 feet and had a 90-mile range. They also couldn't be charged at sea, leaving ship crews tasked with recovering them. Researcher Richard Galloway clarified that the Kiska submarine wasn't a suicide vehicle, but that it also didn't have a high rate of survivability for its operators. The Japanese spent 14 months at Kiska, where as many as 7,200 soldiers were stationed. The American and Canadian militaries reclaimed Kiska in August 1943 as part of a joint mission called Operation Cottage. They expected the Japanese to resist, but they fled before the Allied forces even arrived. The submarine is one of the few reminders of their presence that remains today, but it will eventually rust away completely. Number 5. Eagle Lake and West Branch Locomotives Deep throughout the forests of northern Maine are the scattered remnants of the state's bygone logging industry, including two rusting steam-powered locomotives and a collection of aging machinery parts. At first glance, the site might look like a junkyard to some. But this equipment was much more impressive during its glory days when it was used for shuttling timber through the forest. The locomotives went into service in 1926. At the time, northern Maine was a major logging hub. They ran day and night, stopping for only 10 minutes between loads. After carrying nearly one million cords of pulpwood, the tramway was abruptly shut down by the Great Depression. By then, the two locomotives were obsolete. It would have cost more to move them out of the forest than it was to simply leave them there. They were parked at Eagle Lake and were basically forgotten about until they became an attraction to adventurers seeking to explore abandoned sites. Even though the trains were deserted and left to decay, they're maintained today. In 1996, one of the locomotives began leaning. Volunteers and government workers worked together to jack it up, restore the track underneath, and set the train back down in its final resting place. The project took three years and 5,200 five-gallon buckets of crushed stone, which were transported to the site by snowmobile in the brutal winter cold. Number 4. Aircraft Graveyard Near the tiny Hungarian village of Nagy Gimot, there's a curious plot of land containing an abandoned runway and over 30 military planes from bygone eras. The deserted property was built as an airbase during the 1930s. Today, it's located near an active, newer military base. In 1945, the Soviet Union took control of the site. It remained in operation until all its planes were decommissioned in 1997. Some of the aircraft were sold to museums and collectors, while others found a permanent home at the abandoned airbase. Their tanks were filled with cement so that nobody could try to fly them, and in 2001, all remaining military personnel left the site. There's a collection of Soviet-developed fighter jets at the property, including five Sukhoi Su-22s and 29 Mikoyan Gurevich MiG-21s. Both have a reputation for their impressive fighting capabilities. In fact, many countries have used the jets since they were introduced in the 1960s. Naturally, they were especially popular among the Eastern Bloc countries, including the Hungarian Air Force, which once employed over 250 MiG-21s. The aircraft are sinking into the mud due to the weight of the concrete in their engines. Meanwhile, scavengers are dismantling the historic decaying planes one piece at a time. Number 3. Overland Train Mark II During the 1950s, the U.S. government commissioned the Texas-based heavy equipment company Letourneau to design a massive off-road land train that was capable of hauling heavy loads of cargo over challenging terrain. These vehicles were originally meant to help with logging in the remote wilderness. Letourneau was tasked with building three land trains, the largest of which measured 572 feet long. Known as the TC-497 Overland Train Mark II, to this day it remains the largest off-road vehicle ever built. There were four large engines spread throughout the train, equipping it with 4,680 horsepower. Fully loaded, it could cover a distance between 350 and 450 miles. The six-wheeled cab was 30 feet tall and housed bathrooms, a kitchen, and sleeping quarters for up to six people. The Army began testing the Mark II in 1962. It performed well, but the gargantuan vehicle was slow, traveling at just 20 miles per hour on average. 
In addition to these speed challenges, heavy-duty cargo helicopters started coming out around the same time, essentially rendering the Mark II obsolete. The military ultimately abandoned the project, and the experimental vehicle was never used again. Most of it was sold for scrap, but the control cab remains on display at the Yuma Proving Ground in Arizona. Number 2. Czestochowa Train Graveyard Czestochowa is Poland's 13th most populous city, and it used to be one of the country's leading industrial centers. It's here that you'll find an abandoned train depot that was once a bustling transportation hub. During its heyday, the property connected the Warsaw Vienna Railway, which was founded in 1846 with the rest of Europe. Over time, six other rail stations popped up throughout the city, and the depot closed simply because it was no longer needed. Today, the disused train station and yard are home to an eerie population of aging rail cars that have been taken out of service. The site stands in stark contrast to Czestochowa's modern operating train stations. Czestochowa's landscape has changed considerably over the years, but the city of 240,000 residents is still very lively and it draws many tourists. There's an ongoing debate among many urban explorers over whether the depot is a genuine train graveyard or a neglected part of a large depot. Technicalities aside, it's fascinating in its own right, drawing many off-the-beaten-path adventurers hoping to catch a first-hand glimpse of a piece of history that wasn't intended as a tourist attraction. Number 1. Excavator Graveyard In northeastern Germany, there's an open-air museum of industrial machines known as Ferropolis. It contains five massive excavators that were left behind at the site of a former East German coal mine. They're thought to be the world's biggest collection of deserted diggers, each weighing up to 2,000 tons. Built in 1941, the Mosquito is the site's oldest digger. It took between three and five operators to run the 223 by 92 foot monster. Mad Max, a 263 foot wide digger dating back to 1952, also required a three to five person crew. Between five and seven operators were required to operate the 320 foot long Medusa, which was built in 1959. At 410 feet long, the Gemini digger is the largest of the machines. Six to eight people were needed to control the contraption, which dates back to 1958. The newest digger is the Big Wheel. Built in 1984, the 102 by 246 foot required between three and five operators. Nobody has used the machine since mining stopped in 1991, shortly after Germany reunified. But they're legally protected, and in 1995 the site reopened as Feropolis, giving the public a chance to see the gargantuan diggers up close. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to learn more about incredible abandoned vehicles, let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like these. Thanks again and we'll see you next time for another amazing video right here on American Eye.